And today we want to do a speed test on the brand new QNAP, the new Thunderbolt TVS 872 XT. And what we're using is exactly the same setup we've been doing with our other speed tests. We're using a Thunderbolt laptop, uh, Thunderbolt uh, 3 laptop, and we're utilizing four SSDs in a RAID 0 environment. Um, and these four SSDs are Samsung 860s, and they are 250 gig each, and once again in that RAID 0 environment. Now, before anyone says it, yes, we could have fully populated this with eight SSDs and installed cache and done NVMe SSD cache inside, but we're trying to keep things pretty much standard. There's a four SSDs in a RAID 0, in an eight base, you've got the other drive base for normal hard drives, it's fairly standard in this setup. So what we're looking for is just what is the best speed we'd be getting with four SSDs in a RAID 0. We're going to be doing AJA speed test and black magic speed tests, and not only are we connected by a Thunderbolt into the Thunderbolt port inside this device, but we'll also be doing a Thunderbolt to 10 GBE speed test to see what the difference will be. We're using the QNAP um, Q, uh, QNA T3 10G1T for the 10G speed test. And as mentioned in my other speed test videos, we are recording camera off camera, hello, uh, because if we use the GPU um, on this laptop, to record, screen record what's going on. The result is it does affect our read and write speeds and we do get slightly less than accurate results. So for now what we're doing is relying solely on picture off picture so the PC's entire um, performance can be driven towards this speed test. So first thing first, we've set up a network drive. Um, and again, if you don't know how to set up a network drive, do check out my other speed test videos. But in short, just look for the NAS using QFinder Pro. It'll find it and then just right click, click map network drive and the rest is very straightforward from there. But for now, let's start the first speed test. Let's go for AJA. And again, we've just run AJA, so we might need to go into the control panel just to restart the app, because uh, AJA is one of those apps that does have lots of fun sometimes trying to restart. Um, but once that's up and running, we're gonna do this Thunderbolt speed test of AJA just to see how well it runs. I can see that it's sitting there in the background and AJA is hanging. Uh, so we'll try that again and should load up first time now. Let's get that on there while it's doing its little background warm up. While it does that, why don't we open up Black Magic as well? Might as well get ahead of ourselves. Um, now, for you guys out there that have been thinking about buying a Thunderbolt NAS, as per my unboxing and other speed tests, I can tell you right now that the TBS 72 XT series, and particularly the 8 bay, is some of the most impressive and mature. Um, QNAP hardware I've seen in a very long time. I would go as far as to say that it's probably one of their best NASes, where rather than give you all the bells and whistles and expect you to pay for everything, what they've done is come up with a Thunderbolt NAS that gives you a good chunk of everything, and then from there you can decide what's your priorities. So we'll set that rate, uh, we're gonna do a RAID 0 speed test on that network drive, four gigabyte test files, and we're gonna get started. So straight away, we're banging into there at eight and into 900 megs per second. Now, straight away, for you guys out there that have utilized Thunderbolt DAS devices in the past, you may well be looking at that 950 write on four SSDs and thinking Thunderbolt should be able to achieve higher than that. Well, I've got two things to say to you. First and foremost, do remember that this is Thunderbolt over IP, which is the only way you can have Thunderbolt NAS. And two, because of that, the IP protocol does make the Thunderbolt speed a little less than direct attached Thunderbolt speeds will be achieved. So do always bear that in mind. Um, right now these tests will get more complex as they go, so we'll probably be seeing variable rates of write speed. But just always remember that the advantages of Thunderbolt on NAS isn't so much the Thunderbolt portion, it is the NAS portion. Whereas if you went for a traditional external DAS direct attached storage, on the bolt drive, yes, you might get a couple of un a couple of hundred extra megs per second out of that, but you have to levy that against the fact the fact that a NAS can be accessed by multiple users at once. This device has multiple Thunderbolt 3 ports. Each one of them allows multiple users to access the NAS at the same time at these speeds. And of course, the network and internet, internet distribution advantages of a NAS. So do remember when comparing those. And my last point is just to remember that this is utilizing four SSDs in a RAID 0. QNAP have said that this can achieve high speeds and they are completely correct. The point remains in the fact that you have to have more SSDs to get that max speed. 
And right now what we're using is commercial class Evo hard drives and four of them in a RAID 0 in this 8-bay. So it is worth bearing that in mind. Now the read speeds you're seeing here that don't seem to be that much cop, don't take too much attention to those in this speed test. One, because this, NAS, uh, this laptop is still using a much lower commercial grade SSD inside and this test machine is a 6th gen i7 dual core. Uh, and secondly, the read speeds on this are not really going to be accurate for a video testing software that we're only using to get read and write speeds. For now, what you need to be focused on is the write speed. We're going to let that read speed finish. Actually, no. Why? Basically, these are the speeds we're looking at between 880 and 950 throughout this test. So if we move over from AJA and make our way over to the Black Magic speed test, we can have a look and see what we can achieve from there. Now, hopefully, it's not going to hang there in the background in Task Manager like the previous uh, test, and we should get a better understanding of what Black Magic is going to say about our test. Now, once again, do bear in mind Black Magic, as in my other videos, produces gradual results. Um, so the result is that the speed you're going to see in the right is going to get gradually higher. So don't see the first thing you're going to see here and assume that's the top speed. It's really not the case. You have to remember Black Magic will produce gradual results over time. After this, of course, we will move over to using the 10 GBE to Thunderbolt adapter. But it looks like Black Magic right now does not want to play the game. It wants to hang there in the background. There we go. It's saying because the drive in question cannot be accessed. Fantastic. That would be myself selecting the wrong RAID. There you go. That's why I used the wrong network drive. I used one for a previous video. But 3, 2, 1. Let's go. So again, it starts at 150, but it will gradually increase over time. I don't want to sound like a weatherman saying that there's a cold front coming over from here, but you will see it will increase from between 40 to 65 megabytes per um, wave of instruction on this device. Now we're hoping we're going to see somewhere between 8 and 900 megs in Blackmagic as well. Blackmagic is going to be utilizing 1GB files. And again, I do apologize once again that you're not able to have a captured screen recording here. And this is largely because of the fact this GPU and CPU, once rendering and recording from screen, will make an impact on those results. I should have got a capture card really for this test. But again, as you can see, a lot of the cost of this video is laid out in front of you. Um, we'll keep that moving forward. And we'll let that carry on for a couple more rotations. And because it, after that, we will get ready to do the 10 GBE speed test. While that does that, I might go ahead and start setting up for the 10G test because, of course, the 872XT arrived with both Thunderbolt and 10 gigabit Ethernet connectivity and actually lets you connect via one and out the other if you so choose. So we could have gone for a Thunderbolt over Ethernet setup using a 10G switch, but for now, what I'm going to show you is the uh, uh, Able speed tests using Thunderbolt to 10GBE adapters. Um, this device here retails for about 1600 NECA. I think about 1600 pounds without the VAT and without hard drive media. What are we up to? 551 megabytes per second right at the moment. So again, it is gonna creep up there. We're gonna give it a little while longer before we cap that out and uh, move over to the other one. And oh no, 650 so far. We are getting those speeds. And again, Blackmagic, uh, would have, I know a number of you out there would have liked to have got a closer look at some of these numbers down here, but unfortunately, um, unless I bring the camera over, it's going to be very hard to capture those out there. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it there while it's doing up to 650. And again, impressive speeds, not quite as good as AJA, but AJA was using um, a much different file format. I believe we were using 4 gig uh, files there, whereas this is going to be using 1 gig with a much higher density. Whereas AJA, we were using a very light bit rate on those files. And again, do remember, higher speeds can be achieved with more SSDs and higher quality SSDs as well. But for the sake of fairness, we're just using the same SSDs and the same setup as we've done with all of our tests throughout December. So I'm just going to move over now to 10GBE and I'll get it connected. Okay, so we're connecting it. We've got the Thunderbolt adapter connected via Thunderbolt here. And we're going to connect the 10GBE connection into the top of this device. Or I can actually let go of it and act like an idiot. So... It's connected now. After a little while, don't be surprised if you hear the fan kick in on our Thunderbolt adapter. And while that's connected, the laptop 
should soon identify the connector. There you go. I know you can't really see it too clearly on the screen there, but it is identifying that the adapter has been connected. And from there, we open up QFinder Pro, and QFinder Pro will do a rescan, and it should find this QNAP on that network. There we go, it's found it on the network there via the 10 GPE to Thunderbolt adapter with an IP address starting 169. Do remember that if you utilize an adapter such as this, you will have a different IP range than your internet and network. Once that's done, just like we mentioned in the previous video, right click, map network drive, and don't be surprised if the first time you try this, your system gets confused just because of the IP range being slightly different to that of your host system. So I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't work out. Uh, for those that aren't aware, the login I'm going for this one, in case you're trying to read it off the screen, is password and admin. And there's our RAID 0 shared folder we correct, created earlier. And whereas the previous shared drive was the letter T, we're going to go for the letter K. So now there's our K drive, our K drive on the map network drive. So that means if I wanted to do editing with uh, Adobe Resolve, Power Director, Photoshop, Final Cut, I've now got a network drive that I can get all of my work to and from. So next, let's get AJA back open. Let's see if AJA is going to play the game this time. And again, we'll open up Blackmagic at the same time. Let's see what the speed differences are compared with uh, straight Thunderbolt compared with Thunderbolt into a 10 GPE adapter onto this device because just you may be utilizing a Thunderbolt NAS like this and while using it, you are having multiple editors and you've run out of Thunderbolt ports. It can be very advantageous to know that you've got other options open to you. So let's end this task because apparently AJA doesn't want to play the game again. If we go down there, find Black Magic because I'm sure Black Magic doesn't want to play either. There's speed test. End that task there, and we'll try that again. Go to there, we'll get those up, up and running. Get the magic, and here we go. So once again, we've got AJA, but this time we're gonna make our way to this new network drive, Network Drive K. As you can see, we've disconnected Thunderbolt, so we can't see that original one, and we're gonna start the test. So now, we are seeing marked decrease on that first wave. That first wave we did over Thunderbolt, achieved somewhere in the region of 930 to 935 megs, whereas this time around, the write is considerably lower. However, it is worth remembering, because um, these waves will be like for like in a way, but a, diff a disparity of around 100 to 200 megs, that the read is noticeably higher. Now, that is more than likely because of IP protocol being used in the 10G. Nothing to do with the CPU, and more to do with this system itself here, not having to work so hard as it does using the Thunderbolt controller on this laptop. So once again, for the sake of this test, don't worry too much about read, because there's too many instances of how read has been impacted by this laptop. Now, again, we've broken into the 900s, which is quite, uh, quite good as well. Um, it's worth highlighting once again, that this is Thunderbolt to 10 GBE. And that means that your Thunderbolt editors and your 10 GBE editing network are still gonna have a respectable speed with which to play with. Um, what we'll do now is we'll try and do a final speed test with Blackmagic, and see if it wants to play or I'm gonna have to reboot it like all the other apps. And then we'll make our way into this to see what those speeds are gonna be. And again, do remember, Blackmagic's gonna be incremental in those speeds. Um, I'm sorry this is pretty much a point and click video. There's been a lot of these recently. I do apologize, but so many of you have been asking about more videos showing real world test scenarios of these devices. So we've been doing more and more to try and use these devices in a way that people out there are using. So there's our K drive. We'll get that started. And now we're going to do K. So again, we are going to see those incremental read and writes going up. But this time, of course, the read is much, much better because we're relying on the IP protocol compared with using Thunderbolt on its own. Anyone that's ever used Thunderbolt, particularly on a portable device, will tell you just how much power Thunderbolt needs to be up and running. Whereas IP protocol is considerably easy and easy running overall. And you can see, just like last time, comparing Blackmagic and AGA, AJA, the speed tests on 10 GBE via Thunderbolt are likewise scaled up and down accordingly. But the read does seem to be better because of IP protocol 
being the sole thing happening here as opposed to Thunderbolt protocol being translated. So this has been uh, a Thunderbolt and 10 GBE speed test of the TVS 872 XT. And again, I cannot stress this enough. You will get higher speeds than this if you fully populate this bad boy with SSDs or you use NVMe SSD cache inside or a combination of hard drives, SSD and caching. There are so many ways in which you can adapt this device. But right now, going with those AJA speed tests here, this is definitely going to be a great editing NAS for the year. And I look forward to see how this does in 2019. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hello, thanks for watching my video. If you want to be kept abreast of all things to do with data storage, then don't forget to start. Carry on watching those videos down there on the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe. This video exists to help people like you, and I want to help you. So if you subscribe, then you'll help me help you. And that's, come on, that's what we both want. Now, if you don't mind, I've got really important things to do.